Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Anthony DeKai, the president of Villa Charities. Anthony, first off, how are you today? I'm very good, Camilla. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. I, I'm so happy to be able to talk to you and, and to get some important information out to our community. I want to know, I mean, as an organization that is so deeply ingrained in the community, how has this pandemic affected the organization as a whole? Well, it's affected us on a lot of different fronts. A number of our services had to close down, obviously, at the Columbus Centre. Both of our long-term care homes are impacted by the pandemic. And then, as we're going to talk about later, we have three large senior apartments with independent seniors in them, over 700 seniors, and they've been impacted by the pandemic as well. So it's touched us on every level. Of course. And after so many challenging weeks, I mean, have there been any specific takeaways you can think of when it comes directly to the Columbus Center and, and something that I guess you can apply in the future to, to help the community? Well, one thing that's impressed me is, is the people, um, whether it's the patrons who come to the Columbus Center or whether it's the people who live on the Columbus Center campus, people have taken this very, very seriously. They respect what they need to do. And I think we've seen some great results from that. And of course, we have to mention the long-term care centers, as you, you did talk about at the beginning. How have they been dealing with this news and being away from their families and just having to spend so much time alone as well? I think both of those organizations are doing a tremendous job. They, they were out early with their precautions. They've been very transparent in their communications with families. And it's been a challenge, uh, as you would expect, as they're trying to protect their seniors, they're trying to protect their staff, and they're trying to stay in touch with the families. But I think both, on both cases, they're doing a fabulous job. And we've seen multiple outbreaks occur at long-term care centers, unfortunately. And, and I want to know how at least um, the Villa Charities long-term care centers are working in order to keep their residents safe and make sure that this doesn't happen. Well, they're following all the precautions of the ministry. Um, the staff is, is contributing in a great way. The families are being supportive and understanding of what's going on. And uh, as I said, in both cases, I think they're, they're doing some exceptional work under some very, very difficult and challenging times. Now, when it comes to, to, of course, the other locations that unfortunately have suffered outbreaks, I want to know, you know, where do you think it went wrong? What's, what's the difference between a long-term care center that is successfully handling the outbreak? Was it lack of help from the government? Was it lack of preparedness? And how can this change in the future? That's a difficult question. You know, every long-term care home is different. Um, the patients and residents in those long-term care homes are different. The staff are different. And this is such an aggressive virus that once it gets into a home, it spreads quickly. It's so difficult. I think you'd have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. It would be dangerous to generalize and say that this is the reason one organization is having a problem. And this is why one organization is being very, very successful. But I know having been in healthcare for a long period of time, the people who work in healthcare are exceptional. They're trying their best to fight this. And there's a little bit of luck. There's a lot of skill involved. And uh, I'm sure that those organizations who are having some of those challenges will get through those challenges with the support of the government and the support of their staff and, and hopefully come out the other side and, and learn better and hopefully have a, a better outcome for everybody involved. And now talk to us a little bit about those uh, three residences that you mentioned at the beginning and how they've been handling it as well. So we have uh, over 700 people living in three apartment buildings, and these are independent seniors. So by nature, they, they're independent. They like to socialize. They like to go out. And so when you ask them to isolate and stay home, it's a little bit of a challenge for them, but they've been fantastic. We started off this program by increasing the cleaning that's going on in the buildings because that's one of the precautions that the um, health authorities are talking about and the ministry is talking about. So we started that in early March. And then we recognized that a number of them would need some daily connectedness to other people. So we reached out to their families and we reached out to the seniors. And what we did is we started uh, a senior support team. So we brought some staff back and on a daily basis, they reach out to all of the seniors. They talk to them. It's a little bit of how are you doing, a little bit of checking in. How are you doing from health perspective? Are you staying connected with your family? And then I think the piece that's really special is that there's a little bit of socialization with the seniors. So they spend a few minutes talking to them on the phone about anything that the seniors would like to talk about. And if the seniors then identify some challenges that they have or some needs that they have, our team works with the management in, in the building as well 
to try to address that with the seniors. And what we've done, which has really worked out nicely, is we have exer exercise classes for the seniors. So we have some people who are instructors in our athletic facility who are on a weekly basis doing some outdoor ex exercises. So the residents stay in their buildings and from our, our our ground level, we're doing these exercises and residents either participate on their balconies or through their windows. We've also managed to bring in some Italian musicians and um, entertainers, and, and they're gonna provide some, some entertainment for the seniors on a weekly basis. And we just recently had an outdoor mass for the seniors as well. So those are the kinds of things that we're doing for the seniors to lift their spirits. Um, we've been working with a number of partners in the community, um, DeMarco Pharmacy and Glen Park Pharmacy, who are local pharmacies in our community, were very generous and, and donated some um, PPE supplies to the residents. They all have masks and Villa Charities supplied gloves with them, so they have that type of, uh, of supplies. And when it comes to grocery shopping or getting prescriptions, I mean, are, are they receiving any support as well? They are. In fact, what we did in the beginning is we reached out to all the seniors to find out how connected they were with their families and if their families were supporting them. And the vast majority have a great family network. And so families are supporting them in that regard too. And if there's anything that they need in terms of prescriptions or medications, if their families can't do that for them, we try to provide as much support as we can to help fill that gap. And for now, I want to know, how can community members still remain involved with Villa Charities? I mean, there's such a huge community around the Columbus Center, around these residences. So how can they stay together until this passes and the doors open once again? Well, one of the things that we're doing is our foundation has done a number of uh, small foundation fundraising donation things. We had an Easter one. We have one right now for donations related to safety measures that we've put in place for the seniors. And then there's also another initiative around providing some funds for a small comfort basket of food and grocery essentials. So that's one way they can stay connected. Um, in terms of programming and services, the Columbus Center has initiated a number of online um, activities which people can stay connected to, whether it's cooking, whether it's some cultural programming, or whether it's some athletics. And then our newsletter goes out um, on a biweekly basis to inform people of the status of what's going on, what our partners are doing and making sure that people are are aware of where we are and, and um, right now we're planning for the future in terms of when the Ford government comes out with their their notifications on how the economy should ramp up again we've started some planning we've looked at other jurisdictions to see what they're doing and we're starting to think about how we're going to rechange and recalibrate what we do to provide services for our staff and for patrons in a safe way Anthony, and is there a message that you'd want to share with all of the TLN viewers watching you right now? We really appreciate your support. Um, and I wanna to say to them, and I wanna to say to our residents and those people in the long-term care home, I think we're all headed in the right direction. You just need to be patient, follow the, follow the guidelines that uh, Public Health and the Ministry of Health are offering, and we're gonna get through this. We will, it, it's gonna take a while, but we'll get through it. Absolutely. Anthony, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Camille. My pleasure.